Now, whilst time may be heading in a constant direction during your PhD project, the project itself is likely to zigzag all over the place, stopping and starting and going at full speed or halting for breaks in between. This can be stressful. This can be challenging. This can be overwhelming. But it can also be exciting. It can be mind-blowing. It can be a great learning opportunity to learn more about yourself how to write, plan, code, create, experiment and make great friends and lifelong connections and still so much more. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show and whether you're a PhD student about to start a PhD or are intrigued by what may be said in this video then watch on as we cover some top tips and advice on having the habits, tools, knowledge, mindset and enthusiasm for a PhD project. And now you may be thinking, what do I know? Well, you're right. Whilst I am now just starting my second year of PhD studying P53 in senescence at Cancer Research UK, I'm not the perfect PhD student with all the answers, probably far from that. And so for these reasons, I've roped in two of my fellow PhD colleagues and friends, Tom and Anne, to provide some of their tips and advice as well. And if you have any tips too, please drop a comment down below and share with fellow PhD students if you think it'll be helpful for them too. So first up is having the habits. To get organized better, I started to carry a to-do list book, which is often in my back pocket. In the evening, I try to write down my next day's to-dos. It helps me to relax and gets me going better in the morning. During the day, I carry it with me and tick off tasks that I've done, note down tasks that pop up during the day and write down new ideas. I also took on an advice I picked up listening to a podcast. Never attend a meeting without an agenda. So before I go into meetings, I always double check what the meeting is about and what the output is supposed to be. If there is no agenda and the invitation title is project discussion, I might not attend it. Now for me, one of the habits I've got used to using is a cell tracker spreadsheet. So effectively what this is, is a spreadsheet that details the location of different files within a box. And this may be a very biology specific thing, but it's very easy to lose track of how many protein lysates or different um, frozen cells you've got and so I find it very useful to have an online copy of this because then I can easily update it when I take stuff out or add things back in again. Another good habit to get into is the structuring of your file location as this will help you to keep a good track of where your different files are located such as your results or your experiment plans because you know three or four years down the line you might not quite remember where you saved that really important information. I did make a separate video on that so go check that out if you're interested in more. And speaking of keeping good track of information, this brings us on to the next section, having the tools. Mendeley EndNote paper pile. Lifesavers. Additionally, I have a spreadsheet with short summaries of each paper I've read and sticky notes on printouts of the papers. Repetition is my friend in remembering complicated papers. Further on from Anne's point, regarding Mendeley at least, you can get extensions for your browser, whether it's Chrome or Brave, which is what I use, which means that when you're looking at the paper online, it's really easy to just add the reference already to your reference tracker. I am a big fan of the idea of Focusmate. You can either use the original website for a 50 minute session or just team up with someone you know and start a video call. State what you want to achieve in the next 10, 15, 20 minutes and work side by side. It helps to nudge yourself out of the procrastination cycle that we all have. So now let's move on to having the knowledge, which is all about how to keep up with that gigantic pile of papers you've got waiting to read. So for me, I like using Twitter to see latest publications, though at times this can be a bit overwhelming and make that pile of papers even larger. But the great thing is, is that many scientists will do a Twitter thread summarising the key points from their paper. So it's a kind of good way of identifying papers that you would want to read in more detail and that you can get a quick overview without actually having to read the paper. But obviously this may depend on your subject. I really like reading in context either by just annotating a copy of a paper, writing short summaries of what I've read, or discussing it with someone else. It depends what you're working on, but writing your own code to analyse and play around with some data from an experiment can really help your understanding, although that might not work for everyone. 
Another way of semi-avoiding reading papers is to watch YouTube videos because that's quite a good source of information and if you're a biologist then there's <clears throat> quite a good channel that you might like and might actually be on right now. But joking aside, iBiology, Nature and Cell Abstracts and there's plenty other different channels are really useful to have quick summaries of different research papers normally produced by specialists in the field. But besides having the knowledge, it's also really important of having the mindset, or in other words, how to stay mentally grounded during your PhD project. This is the hardest part about a PhD. My advice would be to pick up healthy habits. Define work hours, leave work at work, find things that interest you outside of your PhD, or learn something that is just vaguely related but not key to your PhD. I, for example, picked up Illustrator classes and Photoshop classes, which can be useful for scientific figures or just useful for fun and creativity. Also, something that I want to give you on the way is have faith in your supervisors and reach out if you need help concerning your work or mental health. A PhD is a challenge, but we're all in this together and your university and supervisors are prepared to point you in the directions you need if you need help. You are here to learn and to grow. This is a really challenging part of the PhD. It's really common to feel like your work is not as good as other people's or that you don't deserve to be here. I think this is because people would naturally tend to talk about their successful results rather than the many hurdles that they have had to overcome to get there. So I think it's really important to remember that a PhD is a continuous learning experience. You won't know everything straight away and you won't get everything right the first time. So it's much an opportunity to make mistakes as it is to get things right. Now the way that I like to stay mentally grounded is by keeping my bar green. So basically I used to play Sims quite a lot as a kid and for those of you who have played Sims they have this like green diamond above their heads and that green colour can go from green down to like an orangey colour to then red and it symbolises how all of the needs of that sim is met and these different needs include things like hunger, comfort, bladder, energy levels, their fun, social, hygiene and environment and you always want your sim to have the highest green bar because then that's when your sim has met all their needs and they're most happy and you know that's the most important thing you've got to take good care of your sim but you've also got to take good care of yourself and I find this way a good way of keeping track of the different needs that I need and I know it may be helpful for you um, it's a quirky thing that I do <laughs> I'm a quirky person. And so lastly then is having the enthusiasm. Contributing to the understanding of cancer, growing with each task and challenge and learning each day. I love being able to do something that no one has ever done before, even if it's something really tiny. Overcoming a challenge is just the best feeling, particularly when your work is applied to something as important as cancer. So regardless of what your PhD is on, it's important to find some enthusiasm to wake up each morning and to go, yeah, let's do my PhD. Um, you might not feel like that every day, um, but it's always good to kind of take a step back and see the bigger picture. So hopefully these tips have provided some insight and helpful advice for whether or not you're about to start a PhD or are doing a PhD at the moment. And just a final tip um, for fun, Always remember to balance the centrifuge and put the lid on. And also a big shout out to Anne and Tom for helping me out with this video. So as always, I hope you've learned something and thanks for listening.